Hi, my name is Rod Cleef, and I'm the host of the Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing Podcast. And every week I interview multifamily rock stars, and we talk about how they built incredible wealth for themselves and their families through multifamily properties. So hit the like and subscribe buttons to get notified every Monday when a new episode comes out. Let's get to it. Welcome to another edition of How to Build Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef, and I'm absolutely thrilled that you're here and you are going to get tremendous value from the gentleman we're interviewing today. His name is Mike Oxstein, and he uh, founded and runs Price Realty Corporation in Dallas. They've got over 5,000 doors and uh, they've placed over $250 million in equity. And so we are gonna learn a lot today, guys. So hang on to your seats. Mike, welcome to the show, bud. Thanks so much, Rod. I really appreciate you doing this podcast and uh, getting this out and about a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's it. I, I didn't think I'd like it when I started because it was all auditory, but now it's visual, so I can actually see and and uh, and and I just love it. Uh, and so I'm really uh, grateful to have you on the show, my friend. And um, so why don't we start by just having you t- talk a little bit about your background and how you got into this business? Because I I think you started with a duplex, if if correct me if I'm wrong, and then and then you went from there, and and now you're uh, you've got 150 employees and killing it. So if you don't mind, go back and give us a little of the history. Well, I, I moved down to Dallas back, I'll go way back. So this really aged me like a dinosaur, but I went back, I came here in 82 and you hauled it and I learned y'all with you haul it from Indiana when the Midwest was just dead and uh, was fortunate to get on with Marcus Similichap in, in investment sales of multifamily. And, um, you know, in the early '80s, and in, in DFW, and and really anywhere in real estate, it was it was a heyday because everything was driven through tax syndication, and guys were, you know, especially in Dallas, they were building, 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 selling a lot of activity, and I was just getting my feet wet right out of college, and uh, and then you fast forward up to '87, they changed the tax laws, and all my buddies that were driving big fancy cars were all driving little Toyotas because the whole market crashed and the multifamily was strictly in those days in the early eighties, it wasn't bought on cash flow. It was bought on how can we, you know, our, our tax write off. So it was a real great educational process. It was, it was great from the standpoint, the ones who survived that period, the ones that were promoters. And, and for me, just being fresh out of college, you know, I learned, I, I saw a lot of that. So, um, you know, I was just starting at Marcus and Milichap had, you know, great years. And, then, you know, then they changed the tax laws in 86, 87. Everything just came to a came to a halt. And uh, and then the RTC was foreclosing on on, you know, all this real estate. It was unbelievable. And and I was in a great position. You know, it's all it's all about timing, being in a great position, creating an opportunity for yourself. So I got to represent all these institutions on, on all this real estate and all their, all this REO. So then, then, you know, there was an influx of buyers from California, East coast, West coast coming in here, buying up this real estate. And, and I was learning how, well, you know, some of these guys would go non-refundable day one and close real quick. And, and then, you know, I got an opportunity to watch those guys. So, you know, during that time, I, I, um, you know, started out with, you know, I bought a duplex. I think that was the greatest deal of my whole life, to tell you the truth. <laughs> bought this duplex and then, you know, bought a little 13 unit right around the corner from it. I remember schlepping my wife while these guys were doing renovations late at night. We'd be at the restaurant having dinner. And then I go, well, let's go check on my 13 units, see how they're doing. And um, I was still brokering a Marcus and Millichap and and, and, you know, for those guys trying to broker and buy real estate, I would recommend that you can't do both. So eventually I got up to um, 300 doors and, and I thought, you know, I just bought a, a really rough deal on Spring Valley Road that we were talking about before mm-hmm. on the hut at the courthouse steps from HUD. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time I moved my offices in there and and uh, it was the renovation from hell that we got. We got <laughs> I think we got through it. It was 73 units. We didn't have a, a renovation plan. We didn't have anything. I, I, had, I think I moved my offices in there. There was no AC. It was the summer of Dallas. It was 100 degrees. Uh, the, the way the guy fixed the plumbing, he would just cut the sewer pipe. So it was hot, kind of smelled. It was, it was rough. And it was myself, my partner, and my parents. 
my parents quit taking my phone call because every day I'd call them every week. Hey, we're out of money. And we got, to, we got to finish it. I mean, we, you know, we wanted to, you know, really add value to the property. Um, we want individual, it was a two pipe chiller. We want individual HVACs. We wanted to change, it was an old 60s building. So we wanted to give the change to the facade. We wanted to change the pool area. Uh, we changed out all the windows. I mean, we didn't even have a budget. We just did it. Wow. Um, so that's. Well, what a learning experience, right? I mean, holy cow. I mean, you, you probably, you know, what an incredible learning experience. I mean, I call them seminars and, and, and I, I have these t-shirts I sell at my live events to say, ask me how I know. Cause I talk about a horrific situation and then it's, it's something that I experienced. So, but wow. I, I mean, so, so you didn't raise enough money. You, you didn't really have a plan. You just went in there and did it. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't a syndication. It was just right. myself, another partner and my folks. Right. <laughs> wow. Like, and we did really well. I mean, we, hell, we bought it for like three thousand a door. Oh my god! <laughs> and uh, we probably put in, you know, at that time that that was early. It was in the early nineties. We probably put in fifteen, sixteen thousand a unit worth uh, worth the wow. renovation. That's a, that's a heavy lift, yeah. It was, and um, you know, refinanced out with Freddie Mac, and um, actually probably refinanced it twice. Eventually, I, I hate selling deals, but we eventually sold it. And uh, yeah. now, fast forward, I just read that they're tearing it down. They're going to build wrap product on that site. No kidding. <laughs> we built the townhomes. If you, when you're in town, Rod, we built the townhomes uh, right next door to it. No kidding. Some brand new townhomes. That we bought the land and built but. Yeah, so, so you you don't like to sell, and 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 that's just a really important point. I regret everything I've ever sold, honestly. Uh, and and you know I've had really big hitters like yourself on the show, twenty thousand doors, thirty thousand doors, and you know one of them like to Albert Barris owns McKinley Corporation likes to say I'm a real estate buyer, not a seller. You know, I mean, all things being equal, obviously, if the market shifts, you you have to sell. But uh, yeah, so so you know you bought that with friends and family. That was at 70 some units. And um, and so at what point did you start syndicating? And, you know, give us a little more of the progression, if you don't mind. So, you know, right after that, I mean, okay. we, we, we started syndicating. We, you know, you know, bought 14 duplexes, bought a 56 unit foreclosure from Fannie Mae, okay. friends and family syndication, bought a 30. I mean, it's like yesterday and 32 unit and biggest and then 184 and um and just wow. really i've really grown my investor base from um really from coast to coast yeah yeah and, uh, we, I, I remember that time in the 80s and and i love to give an example because i was in denver at the time i had 500 houses that i owned and I remember buying a house, um, and this just to talk about cycles and 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 the impact on value. So I bought this place for fifty six thousand, flipped it for seventy six, you know, made a nice hit. The market crashed, and I bought it back for eighteen, same house. Then I ultimately sold it for one sixty, and and to add insult to injury, it that area gentrified, and it's about eight hundred to a million now because it's a tall two story Victorian. Anyway, it's like you know just crazy what happened. I remember the RTC. My God, what a, what a, you know? If I knew more, I wasn't in commercial at that time. I was only doing single family. But what I know, people that became billionaires buying RTC properties. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was, a lot of these REITs today, yeah, the Camdens yeah. of the world, all started in you know buying up all this real estate in the eighties. Yeah. On that, on that topic, how do you, you know, real estate goes through cycles. You've been through a couple of them for sure. And so what's your opinion on where we are and, and, you know, what, what does your crystal ball tell you? Cause I get asked this all the time and I, you know, I'm, I think we're going to have a contraction at some point here, but uh, what are your thoughts? Well, as long as we have this inexpensive money and people are able to lock in this long-term debt and as long yeah. as you got interest only debt, um, we're going to keep going. This, yeah, the cycle will keep going. Now, yeah. I think there's going to be some concerns because, and I've, I've faced it myself. You know, during the, you know when some of these guys are in the you know five years interest only loans, things are looking really great. They're distributing great cash flow to these LP partners. 
And all of a sudden, these loans start amortizing and your debt service increases by 40, 50, 72,000. I mean, I have a deal that's coming up next January where my debt service increases by $72,000 a month. Wow. And um, wow. Because I'm getting out of, you know, it was a 350 loan. We, we right. bought it when Trump got in the office. Right. Lock, great lock right before the announcement. <laughs> You know, fast forward, you know, this COVID, we've, we've had no rent growth. We've had a lot of concessions. We've had a lot of mm-hmm. uh, loss to lease mm-hmm. in January of next year. Now, it's it's not a negative thing. I mean, that's, it's a million dollars a year that we're paying down principal. So in that three or four percent or five percent, you're distributing as cash flow. You're now paying down debt. So, you know, it's kind of an educational process to the LPs. But I think a lot of guys today that have been buying and got this interest only, and they're not putting away reserves. And they're, and they're skinnier yeah. for a rainy day. Yeah. And then, then they start amortizing. There, yeah. there, there's going to be some problems with that. There's going to be some blood. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, a lot, some of these, I, I don't know about you. I'm sure you see this as well. You're in best and final on a deal. And then you hear what it traded for. And you're like, what were they thinking? And, you know, and 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 the, these guys put these things together and make an offering memorandum look any way they like to entice investors. But you know, there's going to be some pain, I, in my opinion. But we'll see. You know, I uh, my kids love to tell me you're tired of being wrong, but uh, you know, I, I I do think at some point there's going to be a reckoning. It's just the way the cycles work. But who knows how long? Uh, yeah. You know, how do you feel about all the money they're pumping into the economy? I'd just love to get your opinion uh, as it relates to the potential for inflation. Well, I just hope they that money finds a way to some of these residents who can pay the rent. I mean, that's yeah. There are, there are a lot of people that are you know. I mean, we you know everyone in multifamilies. I'm not answering your question. I'm kind of in a roundabout way. No, it's all right. It's all right. Um, you know, we've been there's a lot of money in 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 this economy, and and asset prices are going through the roof. I mean, look what's going on in the stock market. Yesterday was yeah. an all time high at thirty one point four. Real estate bad. I remember when I was buying stuff for 20, 30, 40 grand a door, and now this mm-hmm. stuff's selling for over 100,000 a door. And, and right. uh, uh, you got to wonder, but you know, what's driving it obviously is, is, is cheap money. And, yeah. and eventually, does it, you know, a lot of people, you know, I've always put fixed rate debt on all my stuff, but the right. smart guy, because I like sleeping at night. Thank you. Same here. But the smart guys, the Blackstones, you know, I, I'm looking on an assumption deal of theirs and, and you know, they got LIBOR. Uh, wow. LIBOR debt and it's, it's like a buck 50, you know, mm-hmm. on, on, you know, interest only. And I'm going, you know, this is great debt. Yeah. We just assume that's that's that we're assuming a loan like that right now. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And you know, the other uh, thing- I know it's, fi- it's fixed at that rate. They just had, they had, they, 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 they got that great rate because it was such a huge loan and they parceled out this, this asset, the one we were talking about earlier. And, and, uh, but it would, no, it wasn't LIBOR. I'm sorry. It was, it was fixed at that low rate, but uh, so what do you think is going to happen? I mean, you know, it, it, what are your thoughts on, on, on something that's, that's tied to LIBOR? Well, I mean, it can, it can change overnight. You get one right. bad inflation number or, or the economy starts really running hot. Now, you know, I don't know who's making up these reports, but, um, you know, inflation's been in check. And a lot yeah. of people believe in some of my, you know, we not only do high net worth, we do a lot of institutional as well. Mm. Mm. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they've changed their whole tune instead of fixing, they're going all live or they don't see any risk. Wow. long-term no higher rates. It's a different opinion. No kidding. Interesting. So guys, those of you who don't understand what, we, what he just said. So he takes equity for, for limited partner uh, interest in his properties, both from high net worth individuals and from private equity companies. Um, and, and that's what he just said. So let me ask you this. Um, what you know, it, I, I have a lot of listeners that are, you know, obviously people that are doing this business already, and maybe on a smaller scale, they've got some some residential, some smaller multis, and some larger operators as well. But there are a lot of people that haven't started yet. What suggestions would you have for someone that that you know maybe has a W two job? They want to do this on the side. They they want to create a better life for their family. Any suggestions for someone starting out? Um, I think it's, I think it's twofold. Um, one, and you don't have to swing for the, for the fences or hit the home run. 
Start off with a single family home. Start off doing a, a, a small rehab. Hell, I started yeah. off with a duplex and I thought right. that was just the greatest deal in the world. And right. get a couple of your, you know, your football watching buddies, put a little bit of money, right. go buy the asset, go through the, the pains of, um, you know, replacing the appliance package and replacing the flooring and replacing the mechanical system. Mm-hmm. Get, get your feet wet. Or mm-hmm. another strategy, um, there's a lot of small syndicators. Find find someone that you get it. It's all about trust. Mm-hmm. And it's fine. Find a guy that's been started just starting out and, and put, a, you know, maybe he'll take you in for 25000 or maybe he'll take you. I remember when I first started, you know, I had guys at the time, you know, this was in the uh, late 80s, or, I mean, early 90s, that, you know, invested with $10,000. Today, yeah. those guys are investing two, three, four hundred grand with me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, maybe you should start, put 10000 get 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 a taste of it and right. learn. I, right. I learned from the broker's side because I, I saw, what, you know, the good things some of the operators were doing and I saw some of the bad things, you know, and mm-hmm. it was, it was, because the bro, you know, the brokerage world is a completely different business. Sure. Um, from really owning and operating this, which is what we do today. Sure. Did you, as you were getting rolling, are you completely self-taught? Did you have any mentors? Um, speak to that a little bit. Well, yeah. When I when I really um, started buying syndicating my first deal, I had a great attorney and who has passed. Mm-hmm. His family was already in the multifamily, and he really, yeah, I mean, he, he he really helped me structure the deals. He really helped me introduce us some some high net worth, and then it was my ability to you know own and operate this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. the, the biggest thing that I think that really helped me is the person. You know, we're completely vertically integrated. I was about so. to ask you that. I didn't know if you if you you know had your own construction, property management, everything else, but I was so about to. I, uh, a person that's been with me since 1995 over it's going on 26 years wow. has been running the management company. You know, I came from the brokerage side, which is promotion. Sure. Like even today when you see in that broker packages and you see insurance at X and you know, it's X plus Y or R and M is at X and you know, it's going to cost you X plus Y. But, you know, I came from the brokerage and, and, and I really, the, person that's been with me on the management side has really kept me out of trouble. Oh, that's great. So, and, that, and that's a great team. By the way, guys, R&M is repairs and maintenance. Um, so, 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 and, and that's, that, that's a great segue to my next question. So, so you connected with someone that paid attention to the operations or you, know, you found somebody with complementary skill sets that you brought in 26 years. Wow. That's, that's commendable. Um, is that an accurate statement? What I just said. So, so, so yeah, you could I mean, focus on investor you know, relations, finding deals, things of that nature, broker relationships, all of that. You no, know, that the brokerage finding deals and all that was completely on me. The right. management and all that was completely on her. And we, it, okay. was, it was a, it was a great team. Wow. Fantastic. And then my uh, CPA that was originally, you know, uh, doing all my uh, tax returns and putting my private placements and all the numbers together. Right. He came over from a mid-sized company, and he became my uh, CFO. He's been here over twenty years, so we have we have a great long term. A lot of people have been here forever. Yeah, fantastic. And that's guys, the key. I mean, I could sit here and talk all day long, Rod, but it's really the team who have been here for twenty plus years. Well. Wow. That speaks to your leadership, buddy. I, I mean, that's really commendable. Those, those those tenures of that long really speak to, you know, you you must have a family culture there and really take care of the people that work there. And that's that's really commendable and, and unusual, frankly, to see that length of time uh, in this business, particularly. So, so very commendable. So, let me ask you this. Um, and guys, I hope you're getting the, the feel about team here, you know, because because we talk about uh, this being a team sport and, and what an, a great example of that just now uh, with Mike. Uh, so let me ask you this. Starting out, Mike, did you have any, well, any time in your career, did you have any aha moments where it was like, holy cow, you know, now I see the light or was there any of that? Is anything come to mind? I know you've been doing this so long. Every day is coming to see the light. Now, honestly, Rod, even today, 60 years old plus, you know, and you're seeing the market dynamics change and 
Yeah. Um, the renovations change and, and the mindset changing and deal and returns are changing. So this, it, like a friend of mine was giving me a hard time. It's one of the reasons he goes, you're like an old dinosaur. You, you got to <laughs> keep educating. You got to keep changing with the times. And uh, You know, that's funny. I'll, I'll talk to you about something after we sign off here, but you know, everything's changing taxes in Dallas. I mean, taxes, insurance, good Lord, it's been crazy. So, so that's, that's a, that's a, that's a very interesting answer. So let me ask you this. And we're the, by the way, we're the same age. I'm 61. What, where do you get your drive? You know, what, what, what makes you jump out of bed every morning and conquer the world? Well, you know, it's like I got an older son who's 26 years old trying to figure this shit out. Excuse me. Same here. Same age. Exact same age. That's hilarious. Uh, a hell of a lot smarter than I am. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every day when I started in the brokerage business, and I have a young son who just started at Marcus and Milichap, which is nice. Cool. That's cool. That's, That's kind cool. of so. Every day, you know, I mean, find your passion is what I tell my oldest son. Find something that you love. And I go, look, there are days when I was your age in the brokerage world, make dialing for dollars. It wasn't a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But when you got that one guy that wanted a list, or you found that new investor that wanted to invest with you, or you found that new deal, or you found that new institutional partner that wanted to team up, then you say, you know, oh my God, this is great. This is all good. worth it. You know, yeah. This is rewarding. Um, not every day is, is going to be a great day but every day will lead up to a better day. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, and, and, so and, and what an incredible education your boy's getting dialing for dollars. Every year you encounter every temperament, every personality type and talk about a skill set that stays with you forever. Would you agree? I mean, it's like, you know, knocking on doors that that type of proactive sales initiative is just so incredible for your future success, pretty much in anything, in my opinion, because it, it enhances your ability to influence at a much higher level. Would you agree with that? Quite honestly, you know, I went back to start dialing, calling institutional guys, mm -hmm. calling on new investors. Right. And it got fire back in my belly. It reminded yeah. me back when I was 22 <laughs> years old, dialing. Love but, it. You know, today it's more fun because, you know, you got a track record. You, you know, we're real. We got, you know. And You're not afraid of rejection anymore. It's really like, you know, it. okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> See you next. You know, it's like, who cares? Right. Oh, I love it. I love it. So let me ask you this. What would you, if you were asked what you would consider your greatest, and by the way, I love the, the fact, you know, I asked you what your drive was and you instantly went to your kids. So, I, I mean, you didn't come right out and say it, but that's what, that's how you responded. I love that, by the way. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that. So what do you consider your greatest professional success so far? I, I I would have to say that the longevity of the people that have worked yeah. at Price Realty, you know, we yeah. have 150 people that have yeah. been here. If you go to some of these managers that have been with me from the get-go, some of the regionals wow. have been with me for a long time. And wow. then the other good thing is even I have a lot of the same investors that have been in deal in and deal out for, for, for years, forever. decades, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they've, they've been with, you know, in the 08s when things changed, you know, they're going, they're living COVID right now with me. Um, so they've been with me, the good, bad, and, 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 and uh, you know, for better days. And, yeah. you know, the thing that you always have when you bring in the new investors and you buy a deal down in Houston and it's not performing very well. And I go, look, this is your first deal with us. Be patient. We'll work our way out. You yeah. know, I got people been with me for a long time. So really not to ramble on. I think the longevity of the investors and the people that have been here for a long period of time, but I, I'll be really good when I'm 80, 90 and my, maybe my youngest son is in here at work and in that, that succession continues. That, that'll be something else. That's, that's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm hoping the same thing on my end. I mean, you know, my son is like, just now, he's 26, like yours, just now interested in real estate. And he's like drinking through a fire hose. He's loving it. He calls me every single day to ask me questions and just praying that he comes into the fold with me as well. So, so I totally feel you. So, so, let me ask you this. What do you think is the most challenging part of what you're doing today if, of your role? You know, I know it's evolved and, 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 and as you've grown, but, 
right now with 150 employees with 5,000 plus doors, um, you know, what, what do you think is the most challenging part of your role? Um, well, it's a combination of one, um, you know, I got, I have a newer acquisition guy that just joined us. So it's important for me to, to continue to be engaged and, and, and it's been difficult to find deals because deals are really difficult right. to find right now. Everybody has different levels of money. So from an acquisition standpoint, we didn't buy anything last year. So wow. that was kind of like, it's like That's unbelievable, tough. but right. um, maybe it's, maybe it'll turn out to be a good thing. So finding new deals is a challenge. Um, you know, keeping the people that are still, I don't think keeping people, I think people are pretty happy working here at Price. They've been here for a long time. Uh, well, obviously. Um, I mean, that that's that's apparent. Yeah. But, you know, the challenging things from, oper- you know, operations are very challenging right now, yeah. just from the standpoint of COVID, even though they say 95% of are paying. But, you know, from us, we had about two and a half million dollars for 2020 of a non-paying rent. You know, wow. what, what happens when they do lift the stay to start evicting? Are we going to have enough people to fill those units? What happens mm-hmm. to rents? And, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but hopefully yeah. we're getting to the end of COVID and, and, you know, by the end of the third quarter, maybe things are more back to normalcy. Yeah. Let's hope so. Let's hope so, my friend. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, you know, what words of wisdom I mean, you've, you've, we've talked about this a little bit, but I, I just, just, I'd like to go back to it for just a moment. What words of wisdom would you share with aspiring commercial real estate investors? What do you think, you know, maybe some of the best advice you've gotten over the years or what advice might you give them? Um, you know, you, you suggested starting possibly passively in a small deal. Try, I, yeah, actually, you know what? That's been asked and answered. Forgive me, forgive me. You, you've answered it. Um, but let me ask this question, which I love to ask everybody. Um, if you could go back to your younger self in this business, what might you do differently? Well, <laughs> I would have liked to have bought a few more deals yeah. and been a little bit more aggressive, I think, yeah. instead yeah. of being, you know, passive worried. Um, yeah. And maybe I got a little, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? You know, I, I, I got I got a pretty good success, got a pretty good track record. You know, I lost kind of that motivation to can continue to go out there and look for those bigger value ads. I got kind of like as my friend said, comfortable. You know, I got comfortable. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now I got a young new acquisition guy. I got a new son that's learning the business. Um, so, you know, I'm hungry again. Good. It feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, I love it. You yeah, know? yeah, it feels good. Yeah, I, I, you can I do only too. swim, bike, run so many hours of the day. You can only right. play golf so many hours of the day. So you got to continue to build that passion. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, you know what? What book do you gift the most to people? I'm sure you meet lots of aspiring uh, entrepreneurs, lots of aspiring multifamily investors. Is there? Is there? Anything you recommend or book that you recommend that you that you um, or gift more than another? Yeah, I, I got it for both my. It's called Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich, baby. I've given away four thousand copies of that book, and I'm not exaggerating. Everybody in my live events gets it. I tell them read it at least twice a year. I love it. We're on the same page, my friend. Love it. I and mean, I got it when I was just 23 yep. years old at Marcus and Millen Champ. Yep. Just yep. keep dialing and be honest with people and don't yep. screw anybody. It's it's, yep. it's a marathon. It's not an effing sprint. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So you, you said, you, you mentioned the word success. How do you define success? You know, I, I, I think I'm successful in my own right. Uh-huh. But, but I'm just curious in your mind, what, what's your definition? But, but you got to keep building on that. Yeah. I tell people, I tell people, oh, I'm sorry, I interrupt. Please continue. Oh, go ahead. My bad, bro. No, no, no. I, I interrupted you. I'm notorious for it. I'm terrible. It's the only hate mail I ever gets because I interrupt people. But, but you know, um, and I lost my train of thought after all that. So, please continue. <laughs> well, you're, you're, we're on the same page. I mean, yeah. success is not, it's not all about money. No. Oh, that's where I was going. I tell people, you know, 
It's never about the goal. I tell the story, you know, I built this giant house on the beach within two months of moving in. I was depressed because it's about continual progress and growth. You need to feel like you're growing and progressing, which is why you're, you're probably supercharged again because you're back in the mix. Yes. Yeah. I'm more in, I'm engaged. Yeah. You're you know, engaged again. You're, 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 you're moving forward. You're not, you're not just out there on the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, okay. You got to be engaged. You got to right. make it happen. And, and you got to be, you know, I went back to my roots. Hell, I mean, I'm dialing on people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's like, awesome. Uh, That's yeah. awesome. Are there any favorite quotes that you have that, that, that you've either got hanging on your wall or you share with people or that you enjoy? Um, Anything come to mind? I don't know. I got a picture of Jack Nicholson. The people that give a shit are right over there, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Love it. No, I, no. And I got a big picture of uh, Warren Buffett. You know, he's been, you know, I went to a Warren Buffett. Uh, a what small, a guy. Uh, what a guy. Yeah. You know, he's been yeah. doing it for years. He's been successfully. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah, no, I, I'm totally, totally with you on him for sure. Yeah. He's amazing. I don't uh, really have any sayings per se. I just some okay. people like him I admire. And- right. That was my next question. Who, who you admire, you know, that you look up to and, 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 you know, I totally agree with, with, with what you just said. So, you know, I was going to ask you if you had any failures that contributed to your early success, but you kind of went into that with that 72, you know, wouldn't call it a failure, but you learned so much from, you know, or, you know, that, that early unit you were talking about with the high, you know, uh, heavy lift. Um, but I would but, go uh, back and talk about like 08 rod a little bit and yeah. your listeners and that Please. Is, if you own product, and, 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 and the markets are going to get tough again. And, mm-hmm. and, and 08 was a very humbling time for everyone at Price Real. We had three loans that, were, that came due. Mm. And there was no dollars to refinance that. Right. So the whole thing is being honest with your lenders and working it out. And, 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 and also make sure you take care of your assets. It's very mm-hmm. it's crucial. Mm-hmm. And don't distribute all, all the cash flow to your LP investors. Make sure you got money for a rainy day. Yeah. I mean, we had several deals, you know, the rents, we refinanced, you know, my whole thing in the beginning was refinance return capital. Mm-hmm. Um, put a lot of debt on these deals in the early 2000s. And the yeah. debt market went away in 08. Mm-hmm. And to tell you the truth, I learned from that. I would never do that again. You know, the leverage, well, the leverage today, I've been putting lower leverage. If it's not there to totally refinance, return capital, don't do it. Right. And, and make sure you got adequate reserves because yeah. it, it's just, it's just crucial. Yeah. I, we, we, we do huge reserves, uh, low leverage. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's kind of been, yeah. Again, I told you about my experience back in 08, lost my shirt and, uh, Hit me once, shame on you, you know, <laughs> so hit me twice, it's on me. Uh, so, no, that's really good advice. Uh, ex- extra operating reserves right now, hold on to cash. Don't don't distribute if you if you don't have to um, until you know exactly what's going to happen and, and get a, a, a comfortable feeling, but you've got to have money in the bank. Um, so, let me ask you this. Do you... Um, do you set aside times to focus on forward vision? Is this something you, you have? Do you have any, do you have any um, habits or rituals around your vision and, and your goals and, or, you know, moving forward? I just have a couple more questions, but that's one of them. Do do you have any, you know, like a morning ritual? You, you said you bike and and so you're, you're you're obviously look, you look like you're in great shape. You take really good care of yourself, but is there any, anything like that? Any, any vision exercises? No, and, and, you know, honestly, probably should do more of it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a great question. Thank you. I really, you know, I'm more, I, I do a lot of stuff by gut. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, and, and, and your, your intuition, your gut is so powerful. I tell people, you know, if you meet someone and your stomach is feeling a little funny, trust it because your brain is so powerful that subconsciously you might, you're not even conscious of it. It's sensing something's off. And, 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 and honestly, when you've seen as many assets as you and I have, you can go see an asset and, and, and your gut will tell you something. And you, you're not even quite sure what it is consciously immediately. Do you agree with what I just said? Yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, listen, my friend, this has been a real treat uh, to chat with you. And uh, you've absolutely added tremendous value today. And uh, 
Uh, it's really very much a pleasure to meet you as well. So um, thank you for, for coming on the show and, and uh, sharing your wisdom and, and uh, definitely uh, give you a jingle the next time I'm in your backyard. So yeah, please do look forward yeah. to meeting you and I appreciate well, your time. And thanks yeah. for, um, uh, for the podcast. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Rod, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. Now, I know you've been hard at work helping our warrior students do just that using our ACT methodology, which is awareness, close, and transform. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? You bet. Guys, we've been going nonstop for three years, building an amazing community of like-minded people. And our coaching students, which we call our warriors, have had extraordinary results. They've purchased thousands and thousands of units. And last year, we did over a thousand units with our students. And we're looking to grow this group and take it to the next level. We're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework that's really step-by-step and then leverage our systems and network to raise equity, to find and close deals, and to build partnerships nationwide. Now, our warrior community is finding success in any market cycle. So, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more of our incredible network and take advantage of the incredible opportunities that are coming very soon, apply to work with us at mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411. That's mentorwithrod.com or text CRUSH to 41411.